Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Balkan. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint Hi Marshall Helbrecht. If you'd like to support the channel, our coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Now on to the video. First colour we're going to use is Citadel Retributor Armour. We're going to get this gold on his armour all sorted out. I want to get a nice smooth layer on this because obviously the gold stands out quite a lot on this miniature. So you've got the red of the cloak different things like that so make sure you get a nice smooth layer of the gold that gives you plenty to build on later on next we're going to use a little bit of citadel mephisto on red it's going to be to do the interior of the cloak and quite a lot of the decorations and things like that on it Quite a few icons and different little bits like that and folds in the cloak. So you need to make sure you give them a nice smooth layer of a fist on red too. You can see there's some really thin edges around some of the Templar symbols on his shoulders. So what you want to do is use the red to get onto them. Try and your best not to get it onto any of the other areas. But if you do, we can always touch them up before we start shading. So now we're going to use corn red. This is going to be to do the purity seals, like the wax parts of the purity seals. There's a couple of them on one side of his leg and on the back of his sword too. You'll notice that the base is slowly getting painted as the time goes on in this video. I'm not covering that because depending on how you do your bases depends on how you work it out or whether you've got the stone or the orc on there. So you'll just see that coming along as it goes along. Also using a little bit of corn red on those candles at the top there too. Next we'll be using a little bit of Citadel Rakarth Flesh. I'm going to use this to do the parchment on the purity seals and also that skull at the top there too. It also has a pretty hefty bit of scroll going over one shoulder, or from one shoulder I should say, so make sure you catch that too. Now it's going to be a little bit of Citadel Bane Blade Brown, I'm going to use this to do his belt and also the grip of the sword. There's also two little straps holding that tabard on, just under each arm, one under each arm, so you want to make sure you get them too. Like so. Now we're going to do a little bit of Citadel Iron Hand Steel, or if you've got it, you can use Lead Belcher as well, they're pretty much the same colour. We're just going to do the sword, and then you've got some of the other little bits, like the reliquary, in one hand. You've got parts of his power pack as well, and also the little brackets that are holding on the skulls on his shoulder there, and then that bionic hand too. Also going to be using model air chrome to do all the chains because i expect they'd be worn quite shiny also kept in good nick too a little bit of vallejo white now we're going to use this to do the templar symbol on the chest here and a few of the other details it's got loads of little shield shapes dotted around the miniature too with different shaped red icons on them like a inverted v a line going across, you've got like a red cross on the one on his power pack too. Now it's time for some Vallejo Model Air Chrome. I'm going to be using this to do all of the chains. There is quite a few here. Like so. 
I'm going to start with the shade. We're going to use Citadel Reichland Flesh Shade. This is going to be to shade the armor. I usually would use a Grax Earth Shade, but this guy, when you look at him, has a more orangey tint to the armor. I was wondering whether or not to do it in a kind of brass color and build up to the gold. But I like the look of the gold armor more than a kind of brassy kind of color to it. So I thought if I give it a Reichland Flesh Shade Wash, that's a bit more red than the Agrax Earth Shade. Not quite as dark and grimy looking. So I expect it to be quite well kept too. You can get a nice effect on the gold with that. Next up, Citadel Snake Bite Leather. This is going to be to do the grip of the sword and the leather of the belt as well. Basically everywhere we did Bane Blade Brown. Give it a nice leathery effect. Next, Citadel Gnome Oil. I'm going to use this to do all of the silvery metallics, so the bionic arm, all those chains, all the blade of the sword, the reliquy, all that kind of stuff. Just give them a nice shade to bring out all that detail. That should do you fine. Now we have Citadel Seraphim Sepia, or Sepia as it's called. I'm going to use this to do all of the bone and the parchments too. A long time saying Sepia, not Sepia. It takes a while to get used to using the correct word. Give all of these a nice shade of the Sepia, and then you'll have that as a nice base for when we start building up the colours on those later on. Now we're going for some Agrax Earth Shade. We're going to use this on all of the Retributor armor, which isn't his actual battle plate. So you've got the sort of spiny bits at the top here, and then you've got the little cage around the skull, bits on the grip of the sword, and that kind of thing. So just leaving his normal gold armor with that Reichland Flesh Shade shade. Doing all the little gold parts that we haven't yet covered. So we're going to be doing Citadel Carabird Crimson now, using this on the Purity Seals, the wax parts of the Purity Seals there, and also on the red ribbons, or parchments, or whatever they are that are floating from his back there. He's got the large one coming out from the side, and then the two from the top by the candles. So you just want to give them a good coat of that, and also do the candles too, because we're doing them the same colours as the wax on the seals. Now we're going to use Citadel Contrast Black Templar. This is going to be to do just the tops of these two sections on the power pack. And I'm going to use Citadel Druchi Violet to do all of the red sections now. So any bits that you've used Mephiston Red on, this is the colour that you want to shade with the Druchi Violet. like so. So the final shade or contrast we're using is Citadel Contrast Apothecary White. And this is just to go over all of the white painted bits on the miniature. This will just give them that nice light grey shade so we can then put the white back on and you'll have that nice mellow shading in all the corners and the recesses. Returning to the armour now, we're going to start with Citadel Retributor armour. We're going to start applying this to the areas that will be catching the light, so you want to think about where it's going to get the most light. So you'll have like kind of ridges or lighter sections running the length of sort of that 
raised thigh that I'm painting at the moment here. We also have sections on the shoulders, on the feet, on the top edges of surfaces and things like that. Just think about where the light will catch it and where it will reflect the most and then put the highlights and the colours on there. First highlight is going to be Citadel Liberator Gold and this is going to be to do the lighter patches that you've just done with Retributor Armour. You want to paint about 50% of them with the Liberator Gold. Also you can use this if you want to, to do really thin edge highlights in the areas that are still shaded and didn't get any Retributor Armour. This will just make those edges stand out even though they're not catching too much light and they may be slightly out of sight. It'll just mean that if you look past the front part of it you'll be able to see that little highlight going along maybe the edges on some of the armour plates and things like that. The final highlight for the armour is going to be adding a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome. And it's mainly going to be edge highlights and slight highlights in the areas where there's plenty of light being caught. Now the Model Air Chrome has loads of pigment in, so it will help you highlight those edges and make those stand out loads, which is really, really cool. You can use it to get those details to really stand out and look nice and shiny. Working on the reds now, it's going to be Citadel Mephiston Red. And this is going to be used to reapply the Mephiston Red on the areas we've previously used it. So it's like the cloak and the Templar symbols and things like that. Again, those symbols on the shoulders you want to be careful applying this use the thinnest brush you've got so you can get those edges of those templars badges painted red and you want to be thinking about where the light is going to catch these sections of the cloak i will link up a how to paint red cloaks tutorial here so that you can have a look at that and i'll kind of show you how you want to get your cloaks looking nice quick and easy three color method of doing cloaks or three colors in a shade i should say so next is Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet. This is going to be to highlight the cloaks and all those red areas again. You can see that gives it that nice bright orangey colour. We're not using this right the way to the very bottom of the cloak because we're leaving that as though it's been dragging in the dirt a little bit. The final highlight for those reds is Citadel Wild Rider Red. We're going to use this to do the final highlights for these areas. In some places you'll be able to give this uh, kind of area highlight, not just the edges. Other places you'll just want to use it on the edges to make those stand out. But using this the final one, you can see that Templar cross on his chest there and the little part of the tabard at the bottom here, how that highlights it and make those stand out and gives you a really, really nice look as though it is catching the light the way it's flared out at the bottom. That's the effect that you want to try and be getting on the rest of the cloak too. So now I'm going to use some Vallejo black. I'm going to reapply the black to all of the areas because we've gone over some of the edges with the reds and things like that as we've gone along. So you're going to touch up all those black areas because we are now going to start working on that and highlighting that. First highlight colour is going to be Vallejo German Grey. It's a nice dark grey colour, it doesn't stand out too much against the black, but what it does is it gives you that nice highlight so that once you've varnished it and you've got it all set up, it sort of discreetly blends into the black. It's a weird way to describe it, I suppose. But once you've varnished that, you can see that the highlights are there, but it's not too glaringly obvious that you've used a grey over the black. That's why I like the German Grey so much. So you want to think about it, work it on the same way that you did the reds on the cloak, but using the German grey in the same way as you would have used the Evil Sun Scarlet. As a final highlight on all those black areas, we are going to use Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey. We're just generally going to do an edge highlight, but the same we did with Wild Rider Red. We are going to use it to do a few little wider areas in different parts of the cloak too.
So we're going to be using Citadel Rakarth Flesh now and working on the skulls, which he's got dotted about him. So you're applying the Rakarth Flesh, leaving the Seraphim Sepia in the recesses. And just blocking that colour back in. And leaving the shade sort of on the underside of the cheekbones and the underside of the skull and things like that. You want to be putting this where it is catching a little bit of light and then we'll be doing highlights using the other bone colours on the bits that will be showing up a bit more. Next we have Citadel Ushabti Bone. We're going to start highlighting the skulls. So if you think about where the light's going to catch it, you want to make sure that you're getting about 50% of the area that you did the Rakar flesh in. So like the top of the skull where you've got the Rakar flesh going down the sides, you only want this covering the sort of like the top 50% of it. And also doing a little bit of highlighting on those bottom edges of the cross, which is on the skull there at the front. Finally, we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Screaming Skull. I've upped the exposure a little bit so it stands out that little bit more so you can see where I'm highlighting here. But you want to do mainly, as so you were doing edge highlights with this one, you're not doing too much on the actual skull itself, just bringing out the lighter shades on the bits that will be catching more light and the bits that you want to stand out more, like the teeth and the cheekbones and the nose and those little areas around that badge on the front of the skull too. Well, we used Rakar Flesh on the skulls and the parchments before. We're now going to start working on the parchments using Citadel Rakar Flesh mixed with a little bit of Vallejo White. Whichever white you use is fine. We're just going to start highlighting these and getting some of those brighter highlights down on the parchments. As always, think about where the light's going to hit them and try and highlight those parts a little bit more. So we'll be using this highlight to do about 50% of the Rakath flesh on these little parchmenty bits. We're now adding a little bit more white to the previous mix. We're going to do one final highlight on these sections. It's mainly just to bring out the edge highlights and the tops of creases and that kind of thing on the parchments just to show where the light is catching them the most. So like top edges, sort of underneath little cuts and splits in the parchments, that kind of thing. Now we're going to be using Vallejo White just on its own. I'm going to start reapplying the white to the Templar cross on his chest and the cross on his face, the white shoulder pad, and those little shield shapes that he's got dotted about him. We've also got that kind of round symbol just on the front of his shin there too, on his knee pad. So you want to get the colour of white back on those, leaving the apothecary white in those recesses and around the rivets and that kind of thing. We've also used a little bit of white on the reliquy, at the bottom, and we're now going to use some Cassandori yellow on this to make it look like it's illuminated from inside. I've added a few little bits of white along the top edges of some of the surfaces there as well, so that you can highlight those with a little bit of the yellow. It makes it look like the glow's coming out a little bit. like so. So now I'm going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Fugan Orange. I'm going to use this on the top, sort of like third of the Reliquy. Just to give that a bit of an orange glow. So it does look like there's something on fire inside it. He's carrying that burning forward. We're going for a little bit of Citadel Corn Red. It's going to be used to highlight the, or reapply the colour rather, to the candles and also the wax parts on the purity seals too. 
Think about where the light's going to be coming in, where the shade is going to be. Making sure to leave the Carrowberg Crimson in those recesses. Next up, it's a little bit of Citadel Wasdaka Red. I'm going to use this to highlight the wax sections, the candles, and the purity seals once more. The final highlight we're going to use is Citadel Pink Horror. This is going to be just to finish off those wax sections, give those a little bit of that lighter shade that you get when you're burning red candles. Now I'm going to use some Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm going to use this to highlight those red ribbons at the back there. Could have actually done this with the cloak, but I completely forgot which colours I was using for it and then realised that I was using the same colours as the cloak. So we could have just done that. But we're using Evil Sun Scarlet here to highlight these ribbons. The next highlight here is going to be Citadel Wild Rider Red. This is just going to be to do the final highlights, sort of the edges and some slightly wider areas on these ribbons just to make them stand out. Start to see from just having that Evil Sun Scarlet on there that the shape of the ribbons and stuff like that is really quite crisp and stands out. You can see that quite well. And with this Wild Rider Red highlight going on, it really does make those stand out. I'm going to use some Araman Blue here to do the power field on the sword. Realised after doing this that it might not be the wisest thing because he's going to have some little guy wiping the sword. So he's got some power field resistant cloth to wipe that down afterwards. Although why he's wiping down a power sword afterwards I wouldn't really understand because I thought the power field made everything crackle and fizz and burned all that blood off it. But either way he's having his power field going into the orc there. And if there's a way you could make that look a little bit crispy around the chest of the orc and have a little whisper smoke coming out of it, I would do that. But we're doing lightning shapes with the Adamant Blue. And now we're going to mix a little bit of Vallejo White, or whichever white you use, with the Adamant Blue. And we're going to start working on this little power field on the sword. As I say, you don't really need to do this. If you don't want to have the power field on the sword, that's fine. Just skip ahead for this bit. It's probably going to be about a minute, maybe a minute and a half, of sections for doing the power field, so you can skip ahead to those if you need to. Now I'm going to mix a little bit of more Vallejo white with the previous mix. Just do another highlight on that power field. I'll link a video of how to do the power fields here. But essentially where those little lightning bolts change direction and cross over each other and have little bits coming out of each other that is where you want the lighter parts to be so the darkest part of the lightning is going to be those little bits in the middle and then where they join together you're going to have them slightly lighter Now we're going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix and do the same again, but covering a smaller area, getting those little crossover sections that little bit lighter than the areas around them.
Finally, we're just going to use a little bit of Vallejo white just to put the final little spots of white in the center of those crossover points, the lightest parts, just to make those stand out. Now it's time for a little Ballow Brown from Citadel. I'm just going to use this to do some edging and rough scuffs on that leather belt. Usually I'd do another two highlights with this, but there isn't that much area covered by it. So I'm just going to do one highlight after this on the belt. But using this Ballow Brown just to bring up those details and give it a bit of a rough scuffed edge to all those leather sections. Make them look well worn. And the final highlight for these is going to be adding a little bit of Rakar flesh to the Ballow Brown just to lighten that up and then doing some rough scuffs across all of these leather sections. I'm going to use a little bit more Iron Hands Steel. This is just going to be to add a little bit of colour back to those sections where we used it earlier on. So you've got the buckles and that kind of thing, his bionic arm. Little bits of the pommel there and this little cross thing on his back. Basically just to bring out some of the highlights and the edges on those to make them look a bit shinier and a bit nicer. Follow that up using a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome just to recolour the chains. Also add a few little scrapes and scuffs to those bits that we use the Black Templar on the exhaust of his power pack there. But just picking out these little bits of chain and the edges of different metallic parts can really make them shine, really make them stand out a lot more. It's really a busy model, there's lots going on on this one, but it, you can put the detail in there and make it look really, really cool without too much effort. Now it's Citadel and fist on Red once more. We are going to be using this to do the designs on those little shields. So I'm just copying the ones off the website here. You've got the diagonal one on the left, you've got a little inverted V on the right, and then you've got a little cross on this one on the back. I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo Black here. This is going to be to do the script on the Purity Seals. You've got these two on his leg here. Then he also has one on the back of his sword, and that massive one going over his arm, so you want to get some nice little bits of text on there. Maybe the odd downward pointing wide triangle, like it's a little Aquila, but so small you can't see the details in the wings and that. But all I'm doing here is lines going 90 degrees to the edge of the parchment to make it look like there's really fine writing on there. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo Black again and a little bit of Vallejo White too. And this is to do the red sections of ribbon. So what I'm doing here is I'm drawing a black square and I'm going to do a white square in the centre of it and just put some little diagonal lines in there to make that look similar to a Templar's badge. And then we're just going to do like we did on the parchments, we're just going to do lots of very thin lines at 90 degrees to the edge of the parchment and that will just give you that impression that there is really fine writing going across those parchment sections. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo White. I'm going to start doing the decorative pattern on his cloak here. So he has kind of, from the edge, maybe about 2 mil from the edge of the cloak, he's got this white line going all the way around it. 
which then has sort of like half Templar symbols on the inside edge of it. Which isn't too hard to do, it's just a series of V's, colouring in a little bit of the V, and then touching up the edges, because if you're like me, you will get those V's slightly wrong. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Pink Horror. I'm going to use this to do a little highlight on the eye lenses. So I'm doing the bottom outer part of each eye lens. When I say outer, I mean the back end of each lens. And a little bit of Citadel Empress Children to do a smaller highlight within that area. And finally, we're going to use a little spot of white to do a little white dot at the front of each lens and then a tiny, tiny thin line highlight over that Emperor's Children we've just put on there. And with that done, that is Helbrecht himself complete. With that, we have the finished Helbrecht. Really pleased with how the model turned out. Really like the colours of them. Really like how it all comes together. Just need to finish the two little mates who sit on his base. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and enjoy the content, please consider supporting me on the Coffee and Patreon pages linked below. Thanks very much.